Probably our number one requested video is when it comes to avalanche safety gear and more specifically avi bags. Um, it's been tremendously refreshing to see Climb's dedication to helping progress this for our industry, uh, both in a product standpoint and then everything you guys are doing with the Avalanche Alliance. Uh, Dustin, you, you know, talk just briefly, you know, what is, what's Climb's messaging when it comes to Avalanche uh, safety and especially when it comes to the gear? Yeah, I mean, I guess first and foremost, if you've been affected by someone who's been in a traumatic accident in an avalanche, you know how important this is. Yeah. And, and our goal is to make it so you never have to have that happen to you. Like we want to prepare people, we want to educate them, we want to get them to change their mindset to understand safety equipment and be prepared and buy good safety equipment and practice with it. So they never find themselves in a situation where there's a traumatic experience or a death. That it, That's just we don't ever want to hear sure. somebody have to go through that. So that's really what's driving this, right? Yep. We, we go into country where there, we know there's risk. Yep. And we need to prepare ourselves. That's our responsibility. So from client standpoint, it, it's kind of similar with what you've heard the rest of the stuff. We want it to be more comfortable. We want it to be easier to use. We want it to be lightweight. Mm -hmm. We want it to be functional. We're just really trying to push the envelope and making that better and better and better and better. So what we have here is we have our Atlas and our Aspect bags. We've had these for a couple of years, but this year there's some major revisions. And you look at the bag cool. and you're like, well, that pretty much looks like what we had last year. And from the exterior, it is, it's the same shell. Okay. But the guts inside are now the, what we call the 2.0 system. Yep. So the Alpride 2.0 system is lighter. Um, I'll go through all the specs, but it's everything about it is better um, compared and, to what we had before. And I think, you know, that this is why we get um, so much attention with videos like this because when you read these specs on a website it's really kind of hard to like decipher what what it actually yeah. means and there's a lot and there's a lot yeah so yeah so let's, we're gonna, let's dive in we'll spend a little bit of time this will be one of those longer videos too like you talked about so internally the guts what makes the avalanche airbag blow up the balloon all that stuff is exactly the same between these two bags okay. so i'll only really talk about that with one bag but let's just talk about the exterior of the bags for a second so the atlas versus the aspect one is a 16 liter and that's referring to storage capacity how much garbage can i put mm -hmm. in the backpack water tools you know spare layer whatever yep i'll tell you you can get a lot more than 16 liters of stuff in there <laughs> <laughs> um and then the other one is closer to a 30 liter bag. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so measuring them out exactly how much space they are, you can just get a ton of, so you can overpack them, mm -hmm. right? So what I find myself wanting a lot of times is the smaller bag, I want lighter weight, I want, uh, you know, just compact use. But there's people that are on search and rescue. There's people who are packing stuff for their kids or whatever, and they need a bigger a larger bag or maybe they feel more comfortable with the straps so that's one of the biggest differences right here is the straps chest plate versus the straps correct so this is a traditional backpack strap with the wrap around the um, waist strap here and then the safety strap it comes up and ties like you've done on hey yours. i'm ready to go here yep he's safe in the shop today <sighs> and then there's a couple extra compartments here for storage that are kind of nice to have versus the chest plate here which i like because it offers a little bit of protection in this area right here and mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I've needed it a couple of times, right? <laughs> yeah, we've all, I've seen you ride. <laughs> the, the handlebars get too close sometimes. So this is, um, and it's also a little warmer. If somebody tends to run warm, they might choose yeah. this style. So it's just a, a, a way to give options, um, that style versus this style, right? Yeah, and you know, we sell both of these bags on the store. And, uh, and again, it's one of those things like, okay, well, which one do you run? Well. I, I like the one with the chest plate. I'm a thinner guy. I want something a little bit lighter, but from a fit standpoint, and it's interesting, uh, you know, both like everybody else who works here at BBA, they like the bigger bag. Um, from a comfort standpoint, I think the shoulder straps versus the chest plate. So again, it's, it's like we've been harping on with this whole video series is it's all about um, fitting personal, preference. personal yeah. preference and fitting fitting the product to you and i will say the they ride a little bit differently i've got a ton of time in both of them the one of the tr traditional backpack straps you'll feel some of that weight down you know with the waist strap where this it almost kind of is like 
hugging you a little bit. Like you, you feel that around the chest and not so much back down here. Mm -hmm. And so some people like that more compression kind of hugging you feel and other people, they want to have that a traditional backpack feel. So yep. somebody may feel claustrophobic or something like, you know, in that. And, and yeah. I've heard both pros and cons from people. So it doesn't really matter. Um, RPD, this is a really cool feature that you can put a, a probe in here and you can actually eject the probe out the bottom while you're wearing the bag. So you can have the bag on, reach back, loosen the clasp, it drops out and you don't have to take the backpack off. So it's a quick release mechanism. Um, we don't have it on the aspect because again, we wanted to try to keep that lighter mm -hmm. and smaller, right? So we have, you can still have internal storage with your probe and your shovel, but you can choose to have external storage if you want for the probe. Yep. Um, just a couple real quick features on this one. You've got some uh, micro storage here. These bags have the hard goggle case with the chamois on the inside to clean your goggles. And then the further we get into the bag, you'll see that they come with a tool trifold. Um, some people will actually put that trifold here. They'll store it here, or they might even put it on their sled, depending on what you want to do. That's what I do is put yeah. it on my sled. I don't want it on my back. Um, so that kind of gives you some insight into the storage. And then one thing that both of these bags share is the safety zipper where all the safety equipment is highlighted with red poles. Um, so if you are in an incident where speed is important, and you, you've got multiple people and you're working together, you can say, get my stuff out, red zipper, red zipper. And you can flip around and your buddy flip around. Your buddy is getting your equipment out for you. They don't have to guess where that equipment is. It's right there where the red zippers are. So that's a really important safety feature, okay? Um, both bags have pathways for radio. Um, for the cords. For the radio through. inside the bag. And then also to run the cord over the shoulder mm -hmm. and you can hook them. There's multiple places to hook them. This bag has, you can actually run the radio inside the strap and insulate it a little bit and keep it inside the strap. You can leave the radio right inside. Um, where this one, you can run it over the shoulder just like the pull handle on the other side and keep it here so you always know what's right here in your chest. Yep. So we've integrated those features into it as well. Um, all right, let's talk about the electronics for just a second. I'm gonna have you leave it on and I'm just gonna have you spin around. And we are going to, we've got these two tension straps here. We're going to open them up and then we're going to zip this down so that we can see the electronics. Big change from last year's version to this year is we're a half a pound lighter and about 40% more compact. So you're gaining storage area in the bag. Um, we're, we're reducing the weight. This is the lightest fan operated uh, option in the, in, the, in the market as far as an avalanche backpack. So this is a more compact um, unit here. There's digital readout. There's a digital readout that shows you um, the capacitor charge and also the battery charge. So your capacitor, um, they're using a capacitor to power the compressor fan, which blows up the airbag. And you can see where you're at versus you can also use AA batteries to recharge the capacitor. And you can also see how much capacity those batteries have. And what's nice about that is you can deploy the bag and the AA batteries automatically start recharging the capacitor. And I've been able to pull, it depends, they don't say you can do this, but I've been able to pull it three times in a row on one charge. Wow. Which is, that's a really neat option. If you're in a situation where you accidentally pull it, you know, you hook it on a throttle or a running board or mm -hmm. whatever, I've done it. And you might be in terrain where you're still gonna need that bag to be operational. Yep. You can stow that thing, it's already recharging itself and you can turn right around and pull it again if you need to. Biggest advantage of a compressor style bag over a canister style is once you pull that with a canister style, you're done. You're done. Yep. You're done. I mean, you can pack an extra canister. I don't know a lot of people that do. But we have multiple poles, and so it's just an added extra safety feature. It's, ama it's amazing the peace of mind it gives you because it happens to us all the time of when we're rolling a sled or one of my a-hole guides comes by and just grabs my handle and pulls the bag while we're at lunch so we can give a demonstration on the mountain of how to repack a bag to the guys at, you know, at lunch. Um, but you you can do that and it's not a day ender and it gives you the confidence to you know still be able to go go ride sure 
A couple other features we built in that we've updated from the previous version. There's now a, a little pocket off to the side that allows you to get in and pull a little lever down and then you can access the bleed port, which bleeds ah, the air out of that's nice. the bag. So you no longer have to get in here with it blown up, open it to get to the bleed port. Yep. Another really cool feature that we've been working on for a while is after three minutes, that check valve opens up and lets the bag deflate. Oh, wow. So after you pull the bag, it deploys. After three minutes, it'll automatically allow itself to begin deflating. And then how, so once you repack it, how do you, do you have to? It's a check valve style, so you don't have to do anything. Ah, cool. Yep, it's just ready to go. Ah, nice. Yep. So there's just this, there's the check valve right there yep. that you push down in. So, and we'll get a close up of that. Yep. Um, so that's, there, there are some major changes. How it charges a little bit quicker than the, than the 1.0 version. Mm -hmm. um, it uses, it, there's two options to charge it. We talked about the AA batteries, but then there's also a, a USB-C plug-in. You can plug into the wall, it'll charge it in about 15, 20 minutes to full charge. Mm -hmm. um, and then the batteries take a little bit longer to charge the capacitor, cl maybe closer to 30 or 40 minutes. Um, and I'll just keep a spare pair of batteries with me all the time in case yep. for whatever reason, you know, I forgot last time and didn't put new batteries in and it's, you know, halfway down or something. I know that I have that extra safety feature. Yeah. Well, and it's nice seeing, you know, before the indicator of the red light, yellow light, green light on the side. Now we have the indicator, the digital indicator um, to, to just help aid in making sure that you're ready to go. Sure. Um, I'll have you put this back on and show how the, the waist strap with the, the safety strap through the bottom works because this is, I used to not really care about these and I used to kind of just stow them away and not wear them um, until I talked to several people who had been in avalanches and had close calls and have them rise up over their shoulders. Yeah. yeah. Um, so right now how you're just feeding oh. that through. Yeah. You, you don't even notice it. I never notice it, but it's I, super important to have on. I think it's interesting what you say too. The original Avi bags that I wore, I could not stand this. I hated it and I didn't, I cut some off. Um, and after hearing stories like that, and then, you know, you guys, this bag, I, I don't notice it. And, and that's important and it's adjustable also. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's really simple. It goes through the, the, the waistband here. And you can adjust it clear down. I mean, I had my 12 year old wearing this bag when we first started taking him into the mountains and he was, you know, four foot nine and 75, 80 pounds, but he could still handle this bag. One of the questions I get a lot too is, you know, that handle, could a little kid pull it or could a woman pull it? And you know, it's easy. They can. Uh, it doesn't take them to pull it. So. <laughs> well, I guess it's charged. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yes, they can pull it. <laughs> I thought about pulling it down. <laughs> it doesn't take much force to pull it. Yeah. Well, and uh, oh, you guys would, of course, want to see what it looks like deployed. So here's another really cool, this, this, this compressor builds pressure. It doesn't just blow it up, it builds pressure. Mm -hmm. And so it'll handle a lot of snowpack or a human on top of it. It'll deploy with you laying on top of it. It's got enough power to build pressure to do that. Wow. Um, and you can like, you know, you can like, it's- Yeah, it's, it, this is legit, yeah. yeah. So cool. that kind of covers the main features of the bags. There's a bunch of other little things that, you know, just kind of, we don't really necessarily need to go over here. They can find some of that information in the specs on your site, on our site. Um, but really excited about the new, more compact, lighter 2.0 systems. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a game changer. Yeah, and, and Dustin, from a weight standpoint, you said it lost almost a half a pound in yeah. the bag. Yeah, that's, that's huge. And then I get asked a lot, how, what's the weight difference between this bag and that one? Yep. It's less than a half a pound. Less than a half pound. Yeah, so you're like six, just a hair over six and a half there, and just a hair under seven here, empty. Yeah, which is interesting too, because from a size standpoint, the you know this bag is it's bigger in size, uh, but and weight wise, it's um, really close to being the same. Um, I, I appreciate you talking about the avalanche stuff, um, and then you know just as important as having the right gear, make sure you're, you guys know how to use the gear. And what's awesome again of this system is with not having the worries of a canister and having to go figure out how, where to fill it and everything. You can have fun with the kids, learn how to do this, repack it. Um, practice, and pra and, practice, and just practice, practice. Yep. Yep.
So hope that answers a bunch of your questions that you have. Uh, and then uh, being able to see the updates on the new aspect uh, and uh, Atlas. Atlas yep. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, yep. On, on these two bags. And if you guys have any uh, questions, make sure you hit up the climb site or our site for additional details.